both the contracting firm and as well as the uh, DOT. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, my name is Mark Tiano. I'm the project uh, manager for New York State DOT for this project. Um, again, this is uh, contract number D9034. Um, and as supervisor said, it's the replacement of the Route 28 bridge over to Sokus and Birch Creek. Um, today with me, I have Tim Nelson. He's on the construction quality assurance side, and also Paul Marcello. And from the design build team, contract we have Bill Kramik and Madeline Aquino. Just a quick agenda that we'll be going through tonight. Um, I'll be doing a project overview, and I'll turn it over to Bill to talk more about the staging and scheduling of the project, the aesthetics of the new bridge that's going to be constructed, and then we'll follow up with any questions or comments you have at the end. And I ask, you know, just so we can go through in the essence of time, this whole lawyer to the end if you, if you don't mind. So, quick project overview. Again, New York State uh, DOT is the, the owner of the project. Um, and again, the project is D9034. This is one of two bridges in the contract, uh, the other one being the 209 in the town of Ackwards over to Rochester Creek, uh, a little bit of ways away from here. But uh, again, tonight we're just going to focus on the Route 28 bridge. Um, this is a design build project. Design build project uh, method is a little bit different than the traditional DOT contracting mechanism. Uh, with a design build job, um, the department doesn't actually do the design of the bridge. We we uh, have requests of propo or, uh, proposals from the design build teams who are formulated their contractor and design teams, and then we evaluate their uh, proposals and score them and rate them based on value, their construction methods, timing of the job, and, and again also value where a normal traditional job we put out the project and we take, you know, we look for the lowest bid. So this gives us really best price and value for the job, not just low bid. Uh, again, these projects out of there are one, this is one bridge out of 33. Uh, bridges are being replaced in the region, which is the Hudson Valley region, um, and one of 105, I believe, for the entire New York State were placed under uh, the Governor Cuomo's reality storm plan. Some of you may have heard of the project called uh, Critical Bridges Over Water. Um, and again, these are all bridges that were in safe condition, obviously passable, but they were susceptible to scour and flooding and, and other measures that the hydraulic flow through them wasn't quite what it should be. And again, during major storm events could, you know, could undermine the foundations and um, further, you know, damage the structures. The stru and they were also, actually, I want to just come back. They were also looked at as far as the corridor they're on, and obviously all state highways being major corridors, all these bridges were looked at as far as their needs for you know, major egress and ingress into areas for safety measures and, and for other things, just for traveling public, for locals and tourism and business also. So these, this one, the Route 28 bridge was identified uh, along with others in the area. So we we'll see the, the bridge we're replacing as part of this project. Um, right now I'm going to turn over to Phil Kamik of uh, Echo 3. He was, again, just the contractor who was selected for the best value for this, uh, for this project. Thank you, Mark. Again, my name is Bill Kromik. I work for Echo Grand Project. Uh, we are the design builder for this project. Mark explained. On your chart, you can see that uh, our designer for this project, the firm called KC Engineering, they're our lead designer. We have two other firms, inspection, uh, construction inspection, that's KS Engineer, not related to KC Engineering. Advanced testing does the um, material testing for the project, and along with our designers, we have a construction team, our construction people, along with the subcontractors for construction. Now, the project, as you can see, is located, <coughs> we're just uh, west of the firehouse, if you will, a firehouse road there, and goes over Indian Brook, over uh, Silver's Creek, up past, just past Creek, Creekside Drive. Give you an overview. Looking more closely at it from, from the, uh, above, you can see in the, in the 
yellow area, those are the two areas that the access is on the two ends of the project. And the red area, is the area is right and clear. I'm sorry, tree clearing because the bridge is going to be located in that red area just to the north of the existing 28. It's important the fact that most of the work is done uh, adjacent to the road so the traffic continues on the road. Looking down at the intersection there, you'll see with the, our limit of work on the east end is just uh, just east of the post office. Everybody kind of knows where the post office is. So, and from there on upwards. So that road's going to get regraded a little bit in this area as we trans, uh, transition back into existing pavement right at the end of the, of the line. Uh, and the important thing is the park, the post office, the firehouse are unaffected by this work. If you look underneath there, the picture on the left-hand side, side shows, shows you three houses that are underneath the bridge on the far side, kind of showing you that access will never be infringed upon on the people that work that live down down on the bridge there. Where access coming from uh, from the roadway that are right away up to the church street, I believe, the church road, I think it is. Okay, so there, no one's affected by any work access those maintained. Now also be, beyond that, uh, we understand that in the beginning we have a, a few events that are going to happen during the summer usually, okay? So what we're going to do at times, we may have to work Saturdays. We'll try to work on Saturdays, not on the Saturdays when there's events going on. We'll work that and uh, always maintain access to the park at all times and all the roadways. <clears throat> As you can see, the existing condition of the bridge underneath is in dire need of replacement. The evaluation was done by the state early on, and they looked at a couple of options, and it was pretty obvious that the bridge had to go. It's, it's well beyond its time to be repaired. You can see through the washouts, you can see on the right hand side, it was washed out, left hand side, that they came in and maintained it, tried to fill it with footings to try to keep it going. But it's time to go. As far as the design approach, how we looked at this, we said basically, uh, we had, we're going to provide a bicycle, bicycle railing, that's a higher railing, it's like four foot three high on the side, so pedestrians can use a uh, bicycle. What we have to do is improve the height, what we call a hydraulic opening, which is the, for the water flow underneath. So what we did is we minimized the number of piers by increasing the spans. The span might be 70 feet now, we're going to increase them to like 142 feet, open it up to allow more water to flow through, so we're going to have flooding, flooding situations. Um, and we're always going to be building the bridge to the north existing bridge. So by doing that, you're not going to see a whole heck of a lot of what's going on of what we're not going to affect you. Like when you're traveling 28, you put a large part, you're not even going to know where they are because it's down in the hole down below, working our way up. Okay, so you kind of give you a layout here, the existing proposed. The, the maroon color, that's the existing bridge. The light color right now is the new bridge. You can see in green, we superimposed in green. You can see how we straightened it out, had a big hook turn, we straighten it, and we bring it right into the existing on the far east and also on the, on the west, uh, right adjacent to Creekside Drive. And those the idea is to straighten it out, widen it, straighten it out, and allow the flow to go through. Traffic is through. As far as the staging and the schedule, which is most important to everybody here, I'm sure, in 2017, we're going to be in what we call stage one. That's where we are now, and it takes us all the way into the early spring of next year. And as I said before, that's to build the structure we'll go down below, drive the piles, foundation, and up to the superstructure all alongside the existing bridge. It's only in the mid-spring of next year that we start getting into the stage two, which is utilizing the bridge for one, for one flow of traffic, one direction. And you also utilize existing 28, so we're able to do some of the staging work on either side of the bridge. And eventually in stage three, we actually send traffic on the new bridge and demolish the new existing bridge. So breaking it down to stage one, we talk about the, the, the fall and into the spring of next year. We do the substructure work, we do the superstructure work, traffic stage just the way it is right now right on 28 during this whole construction. Existing bridge remains open, unaffected. Flight persons will be present material. To know what I'm getting at is, we showed you before the access points in yellow on this sketch, when we have to bring materials in or take materials out or equipment, a flight person jumps up on the road, makes sure the traffic is clear, lets the vehicle out, lets the people, uh, the vehicle out or in, if you will, and then close it right back up. That's about the only time you're gonna see much of anything going on from 28 this year. Um, 
You may have noticed we raised Hudson trees in there. We're already driving piles. You may have heard that. Uh, we went, uh, we're driving piles down there, but we did clear trees, establish the access points. At the end of the job, we actually have to replace trees. There's a, uh, there's a formula generated within the contract that tells us how many how soft, how, many, how big they are, depending upon how, how many we move within the right. Mm -hmm. There's a view of what's going on, kind of looking to the west. You can see the existing bridges there, and there's our, our pile driving leads there in, in the distance there as we're driving piles. What's important here is pile driving bench only happens Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 3.30. Those are our normal work hours. As we expect to complete all pile driving by the 1st of June of this year, what we may do between now and then is occasionally work a Saturday and also occasionally work late in the evening, okay, late by I mean, an hour or two, just to drive piles, get the piles out of the way. I realize that pile driving is noisy, I'd be the first one to say that, but it's, it's limited time, hopefully it starts at 7 or shortly after 7, we have to get past that. So that's not the only thing that would, I think would, would bother anybody who lives very close to the site. If you don't live very close to the site, you probably wouldn't even notice it. So in stage two, uh, bridge, is, bridge is completed. We utilize the bridge at the beginning of stage two so the traffic in one direction can be used. For example, we'll be keeping one lane of traffic in the off, the off peak hours after morning rush day. The eastbound traffic will stay on existing 28. The westbound traffic will allow them to go on to the new bridge. What that does is gives us alleyways, and for, alleyways for us to do our staging work in between. And come rush hour by rush hour in the evening, we're back to normal operation. All traffic back on existing 28 and it's off the existing bridge. And that will go on to current stage two, which is that limited period of time, late spring, early summer of next year. Uh, then we move into the, the last stage, stage three, which is really at this point, all, all traffic now slips onto the new bridge. Okay? We're actually abolishing the existing bridge during this stage. Uh, all lanes are fully operational by the end of July of next year and the project gets completed in August of 2018, right here the month. Now, while all this is happening, there's one new intersection I want to talk briefly about is the Creekside Drive. You can see how the existing bridge and the new bridge, new bridge being green, come together on the west side there. And you notice that the green realignment of Creekside Drive has a sharper turn earlier. That's because the bridge has moved over. Right now, the bridge is far away from Creekside Drive, so it follows the the red or pink route for that turn, okay? Now what we've done is we've brought, because the bridge is shorter and closer to Crickside Drive, the, the turn is sharper, but at the same time, the middle it's wider. You notice how wide the green is compared to where it is today in red. So the turn can be easily negotiated and up the, up the hill. But we have to reconstruct Crickside Drive for that run that might be 500 feet. We re reconstruct that all. So along with, as I said before, we have to reconstruct the uh, roadways on either side of the bridge up a few hundred feet each direction. And they also get widened too, by the way. Existing 28 gets widened beyond the limits of the bridge. And while we're doing this work, uh, obviously, if we have Creekside Drive, we're always going to maintain two lanes of traffic. We'll use bi-directional lane during the off-peak hours again. Flags out there, allows traffic to go one direction, stop traffic and traffic in the other direction. Again, off peak hours, just so we get the uh, Creekside Drive done with the strips. Now, aesthetically, to give you an idea of some of the bridge the bridge features we're doing, I'm going to show you a couple things. Uh, we circled the foundation. That's kind of the way it looks, the way it's going to look. You notice that it's a slick, streamlined kind of a look for that, what you call a hammerhead. A lot of times you see a much wider, but this is kind of a slick little look. It gives an architectural aesthetic enhancement to the project. So. That was correct. It also is consistent with what we call the, what's called the Selfish Creek Outstanding Remarkable Values designation because of the senior recreation area. So it handles that. Now notice the, the uh, footing is not wide. It's, it's purposely smaller. Gives it reduced uh, look, but more importantly, it's less effect to the surrounding area. So the watershed areas, you don't want to disturb more than you absolutely have to. So what with a smaller type footing minimizes disturbances. And it keeps the pile driving localized to those, just the areas within the footings. Now, also, the superstructure, it, it does not get painted. It's a weathering steel. So, what happens is, if you look at that kind of chart to your left hand side, the, the color of the steel kind of changes over time, it gets darker. 
when it first comes to the job, it's probably the second. It's already gone past that first stage. It's probably the second stage. But in the bottom right, you'll see the ultimate, like a golf round. That's the call it out until it gets there. But that will happen over over time, a few years, I would say. Okay, just, just so you're aware of that. Very rarely <coughs> you Look, the, the bridge rail, and notice it's got five rails. Classically, a bridge rail only has four or three. When you go to a bicycle rail, you go to five because you want to have the increased height so no one would try inadvertently go over the side. That's great. And that's pretty much it, guys. I'll tell you the story. Uh, we are open for questions for anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, Lane width and shoulder width. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, they're 12 foot lanes, right? 12 foot Two 12 foot lanes, one in each direction, and uh, eight foot yeah. shoulders. Eight and three, I think I would have liked. Eight and three, I would have liked. Yes. How much higher, both than the bridge now? The uh, profile would be the same, same yeah, because this bridge, um, this is one of the ones that ultimately the, the elevation of the structure, we didn't have a flow capacity problem underneath because it is so wide and high. Uh, so we didn't really have to raise the structure in order to get or you know, to get the flows underneath. So. And then will it be any blasting? No blasting. That's no. Absolutely. And how are you going to leave the grounds underneath the bridge? We have to bring it back to where it was before we started. Okay? In a natural configuration. In around the footings, we'll be having a rip wrap around the footings. That's required. But uh, the Water quality issues, because it's a reservoir area, watershed, watershed area, basically says you've got to re return it to its natural state. So it's not, so we will do that, absolutely. Thank you. Mark, I think this question is funny for you. So, why this bridge? I mean, you're not stopping traffic like, before, like the bridge up here by Farmer Jones. It would have been nice to have an informational thing. We've got traffic at that one. So my question is, because you're not stopping traffic, essentially it's still going to run. There's going to be no interruption in traffic. And again, the geography and you know and how the roads align kind of dictates whether we can either you know or the contractor can build on the same line or we have room to maybe build next to it. We have enough right of way where we can, you know, build, you know, either temporary roadway sometimes, or in this case, it lends itself to being able to realign the road, building it next to it, and utilizing the existing structure to maintain traffic on a lower building. No one, again, well, a lot of locations don't lend themselves right. to that condition. This is obviously ideal where we don't have to impact traffic and, um, you know, with no detour. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, when you say Creekside Drive, it's old 28, uh, that's been uh, uh, compromised there on that one bank. Are you going to uh, drive some pilings in there and can hold that up? We, we've already driven some sheeting there. I don't know if you noticed that. Can we show that? We've already driven some sheeting in that area to protect that. I know what you're getting at. Yeah. That does get widened, and yes, we have yeah. to protect that bank. Yeah. Remember what we're doing too now? We're actually moving and making it wider on the opposite side, also. Okay, because the Creekside Drive. Well, on the opposite side, the bank, uh, the mountain comes down. Yeah, you've got a wall. That out, the whole no, wall. no, 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 no. Then you're going to crimp it. No, we're not going to. There's a wall there, a stone wall, yeah. stationary wall. We're not going beyond that at all. But we are going to widen it. There's about a three or four foot strip there. It's not asphalt. We'll make it a little wider there. So you're going to put a ditch in there. Or? Yeah, there is a we, there is a ditch there is a yeah. ditch there now for drainage, so we yeah. have to maintain that. But at the same time, we're trying to widen that side. How far up are you going? Uh, I'm going to say it's about 200 feet, 250 feet, something like that. Anybody know off the top of your head? Yeah, because that's uh, that's uh, you know dangerous in there. It's uh, been uh, falling down. Uh, the, they can't keep the material on the on the road. Yeah, we we got a little another advantage here. I'm going to point it to point to it. Hopefully you can see it on here. Here's a wing wall. Here's a new bridge. You bought me. This is the wing wall. Okay, so the wing wall gets poured, and this area here gets filled in behind the wing wall and then slopes down. 
Yeah. So we're going to be able to protect that area. Your first comment there about that size. Open up a little bit. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. yeah. That wing wall kind of protects that. Yeah. It's a good point. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, before, when you came from Creekside Drive and you were going to make a left hand turn on Route 28, yes. it's very difficult to see visibility. Is that going to be improved? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, by, by doing by doing this, you're coming off it's much better. Uh, look, when you get to the intersection, it'll be much clearer. Yeah. Yes, you sir. know, you, you said in the beginning about the abutments that you made them smaller now underneath. That's right. Then they look like but how is that? How would that you know, like hold up under a flood like I yeah. like that? Is that going to cause it well, to tip at all? I mean, is is being wider going to be hold the base more? Or very good. Well, it's a good point. And keep in mind one thing, we're driving piles. Right. We also, on the perimeter piles, we have battered piles. Oh, okay. Now, they're not all straight. The middle ones are straight, but the outer ones are battered just for that particular reason to give stability. You know, if you, you have a house that's on a wood pile, it's more right. stilts, if you will, right? If you other you batter the outside, that prevents that, what you're talking about, the side spread right. of potential yeah. shear. So, yeah. and they're going down nearly 100 feet. Yeah, it's going down. So what's the shelf life is? How long is this bridge going to be? What we get? I don't think you or I have to worry about it. No, don't worry about it. No, but I keep telling everybody over in Italy, Germany, there are five, six, seven hundred years they got bridges over there. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. If they didn't bomb them during World War II, they could still be there. They still be there. I don't disagree with that. Yes. How wide is the bike or the pedestrian path there? Eight feet. Eight feet? Yeah, the bicycle use usually on the shoulder requires a four foot minimum sidewalk or, or shoulder, but in this case, you know, there's more than enough. I would say it's not dedicated bike, it's bike and pedestrian. It's eight feet. Okay? It's not a dedicated bike only type. Right. Yeah. It's a common use. And the need of a mantra. Anybody else? Looks good. Um, did any receive any comments? Um, yeah, there's we receive any comments from the public? We'll certainly forward them all sure. And I believe we do have some. If you didn't receive one already, there's comment cards if you want to fill them in and, and mail them back or make contact the supervisor. And, um, We thank you for this opportunity to explain the job for everybody. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I'm not sure how it works. I'm usually, uh, an hour or six so I'm already on the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's telekinesis, Bob. And it knocks.